Good day. This is William Garvey, Editor-in-Chief of Business and Commercial Aviation Magazine. Today we're speaking with Brian Barrents, a well-respected business aviation executive who serves as co-chairman of the Arion Corporation. That's the outfit developing a supersonic business jet called the AS-2. The aircraft incorporates natural laminar flow in its carbon wings to make it efficient at both 1.4 Mach and at the high subsonic speed of 0.95 Mach, a key design factor since supersonic operation is prohibited over the United States. What technology needs yet to be created for the Arion AS-2 to proceed? Well, clearly, Bill, the highest priority is the engine development. We are currently evaluating uh, available engine cores that would be suitable. Uh, Our direction at this point is a three-engine configuration, but if there is an engine that emerges that would satisfy a two-engine configuration, we will evaluate that as well. Brian, do you have a time frame in mind when you'll actually make that engine selection? Well, given the current state of our our discussions uh, with the primary uh, manufacturers of the engine, I would be hopeful that uh, we will be under contract by the summer or fall of this year. Assuming that you make your engine selection, you know, in the, in the relatively near future, what are the target dates for first flight and or target years, I should say, for first flight and then uh, certification and delivery? Well, it's, it's clearly, uh, like most programs, it's going to be a, about a seven-year development program, and I would say that... Uh, Five years after engine selection, we would hope to have our first flight and followed by certification two years following. Now, I know that the airplane is designed to fly efficiently at subsonic as well as supersonic speeds. I assume you'd like to see the ban on supersonic flight over land to be lifted. What's required to do that? Well, today, supersonic travel over the U.S. is prohibited. The rest of the world recognizes ICAO standards uh, where you can fly supersonically over land with a muted boom. What that really means is it would probably result in uh, speeds of about 1.2 Mach where the boom does not hit the ground due to the altitude change and so on. In the U.S., it is prohibited by law, so it would take a change in that law or regulation to permit supersonic travel. We have chosen to certify the airplane using today's laws. Therefore, we will assume that we would fly subsonically over the U.S. and supersonically where permitted in the rest of the world. I find it a little bit remarkable that 75 years after Chuck Yeager broke the supposed sound barrier, that most of the world seems satisfied to fly at subsonic speeds. Does that surprise you? Well, I'm not sure they're satisfied, Bill. I I think given a choice, I believe they would clearly opt for faster airplanes uh, in the supersonic regime, but for a number of reasons, primarily uh, technology, the cost, the laws that restrict uh, how you can use uh, supersonic airplanes, all of those things in the past have somewhat uh, limited or discouraged, if you will, uh, airframe manufacturers from entering the market. In the Arion case, because the wing is so efficient at high subsonic as well as supersonic speeds, we feel that there's clearly a a market that justifies the investment, and that's why we are going forward with the project with the enthusiasm that we are. We've been speaking with Brian Barrents, the co-chairman of the Arion Corporation. This is William Garvey, editor of Business and Commercial Aviation Magazine. Thanks for listening.